Many previous masters have said, this human world is a school for training saints. Every soul, when it descends onto this world, brings with them the great and noble power of the saints. However, we have been lured by this modern scientific world, materials, and fame. Almost everyone has forgotten about their inner divine power, losing their noble saint within. Therefore, over the past thousands of millenniums, the Almighty God has been consistently sending messengers onto this world to perform the divine mission to remind mankind of their inner holy saint, to awaken the sleeping Buddha of each human being's soul, and to open the door of the spiritual treasure box for all sentient beings. It is such an honor for us sentient beings of the 21st century to be alive during the era of a true living master, Master Ruma. He represents the Almighty descended onto this world to spread compassionate power and to liberate misguided beings who are currently bearing the sufferings in this ignorant human life. Master Ruma's spiritual path started as a young Vietnamese boy with an unfortunate childhood who resulted in becoming an enlightened master of this 21st century. This journey is a wonderful story indeed. This path was not paved with roses, but instead filled with harshness and difficulties. Although he was fortunate to set foot on American soil, the land of freedom, and despite living in a wealthy family, he still decided to leave behind all the glamour and fortune to pursue life as a Buddhist monk with only a backpack on his shoulders, this young 18-year-old man alone roamed the sacred land of India in search for Buddha's golden light. He was searching for the noble dharma which could allow mankind to escape from suffering and ignorance. The courageous young man, Krishna, spent a long period of time studying with the great masters of the Himalayas Krishna successfully studied with the five great noble Indian masters. Each guru had a unique method of educating and training him. These five teachers had different ways of expressing their love, aiding him in realizing the messages of God and understanding the mission chosen by his Almighty, his Dharma mission to save all sentient beings of this 21st century. Throughout the years studying with these five saviors, the young Krishna was trained by the teachers on obtaining a healthy physique, strength, perseverance, and wisdom through many difficult lessons. Each lesson was a special experiment set for Krishna and his fellow monks. As a result of those experiences, mankind living in the 21st century is very fortunate to have an omniscient and omnipotent living guru, Master Ruma. As of now, Master Ruma has been fulfilling this great mission from God, continuing to propagate the Almighty's Dharma in this world. Over the last 10 years of lecturing the true Dharma, Master Ruma has always opened up his arms to embrace any heart searching for the Dharma, and whomever wishes to practice and support Master and his teachings on the Dharma lecture tours. These are Master's ordained disciples from all regions of Vietnam and countries around the world. Master's heart is infinite and immeasurable. He always opens the door to welcome any souls with noble ideals willing to leave their common human life behind to enter the gates of tranquil meditation and practice with Master 
on the great path of spirituality. When appearing before Master, we are always equal sentient beings. Master never differentiates us based on our ethnicity, skin color, religion, or country. Regardless of who we are or which position in society we originated from, Master always gives all of His infinite love when we come before Him. The majority of Master's monks are young men coming from many different countries. In the age of modern science and technology, it is extremely rare to find young men and women seeking the path of spirituality. Young people nowadays often spend time on pointless aspects, running towards temptation of materialism, fame, and fortune. From there, they gradually engage in the vices of today's society. There are also individuals who come to Master Ruma who have fallen into the society's traps. Unsure if it was due to fate or a particular miracle, something major caused them to turn around and step onto the path of practicing the light and sound meditation method. Truly, these sentient beings are very fortunate sentient beings to have the care and teachings from Master Ruma guiding them on the spiritual Dharma path. It is not an easy task for Master Ruma to hold and manage the jam-packed Dharma lecture tour schedule from Southeast Asia to Europe and America, in addition to the meditation retreats, as well as teaching hundreds of ordained disciples at all the six meditation centers. So how does Master do it? We would like to invite you to watch the following documentaries to better understand the life of Master Ruma's ordained disciples in the 21st century. Monastic Disciples in the Era of the True Dharma Practicing with a True Living Master As we all know, light and sound meditation is the supreme method guiding sentient beings back to their original inner Buddha nature, helping them open the gate to nirvana within. It is the ultimate key for mankind to unlock all secrets of misery, happiness, and truths about life, death, and liberation from samsara after leaving this world. Monastic disciples are the same. When they practice spirituality with Master Ruma, they are all taught by him about the light and sound meditation method. The majority of the monastic disciples initially come to Master Ruma without understanding even the basics of meditation, not knowing the meaning of spirituality. Master Ruma is always sympathetic and sincerely guides them through the basic steps of practicing this holy meditation method. Master reminds his monastic disciples to habitually maintain six hours of daily meditation and continue to develop from there. Only meditation can help us stay connected with God and receive the universe's perfect power. It is only through deep meditation that we can rediscover our inner noble divine presence. The holy power of sound from meditation will help cleanse our karma, purify our souls, and awaken our great inner wisdom, allowing us to experience precious lessons from the highly respected Master. These lessons are spiritual experiences, helping us progress daily on the path of spiritual practice. According to Master Ruma's monastic disciples, meditation is primarily significant and has become an essential part of daily life. 
Instead of resting and sleeping like most people, the monastics use that resting time to meditate instead, in both morning and night. After the meditation retreats, or once returning to one of the meditation centers after a long lecture tour, Master Ruma often reserves time to meditate with his monastic disciples. Those meditation events could last for hours. Sometimes because of a particular heavenly notice or message, Master and his monastic disciples will sit and meditate for hours in the rain and sun, undisturbed by the harsh weather. Master often teaches his ordained monks and nuns as follows. When meditating, you must direct yourselves towards God, Buddha, and Bodhisattva, Pray for the greatest blessings to all mankind, as well as dedicate all greatness in life to the sentient beings of the world. This is the most noble devotion that the monastics have for the world under the supervision of their respected savior, Master Ruma. After hours of meditation, Master Ruma often stays a little longer after their session to further educate his ordained monks and nuns. From stepping upon the path of Dharma very early in his life, training rigorously by the five great gurus of the Himalayas, traveling all around the world and experiencing many different cultures and customs, Master Ruma understands the ways of life in this human world. Life is extremely short. Therefore, as an ordained monk, you have to practice wholeheartedly. Practice does not refer only to sitting. In spiritual practice, we must be humble at all times. Being humble, above all, is the utmost priority in the life of an ordained monk. A humble person is the one with wisdom, one who is humble, one who is intelligent. You should never allow external surroundings to confuse you or tie you down. One must always walk the path of righteousness openly to regain the bravery buried within. That is your spiritual practice. As your master, I would like to share with you the true meaning in the life of a monk. 
A single lesson that I teach you is enough for you to use for generations. You must preserve it within this life so that I can see how much you have absorbed my teachings, hiding within the gifts that I have blessed you with. Although they are materialistic, lies my overflowing wisdom. Who can persevere that? If you wish to seek a life of liberation, to meet God, to enter the world within you, then you must do so through a true enlightened master. Without a true living master, you would never be successful. Therefore, why has our world have constantly gone through reincarnation? Although the master makes an appearance, you are still unable to come before him. This is a materialistic world. Therefore, having a true enlightened master is necessary. Engraved deeply in my memory is the image of the ship of misfortune, floating in the middle of the vast ocean with no future, carrying in my heart a nightmare, a nightmare reminding me of human trafficking, kidnapping and killing before my eyes. A person was brutally harassed right before my eyes. These images overwhelm my head. That is why I have such an apathy towards wrongdoings. I came to America living in honor and wealth with everything and anyone can imagine. And yet, none of that could bring me peace. Along my journey, I have entered spiritual practice within temples. Even then, I would still have to follow their rules and having to endure everything regardless in order to find the path of practice. During the day, I lived in harmony with others, chanted intercessions, recited masses, did chores, swept the yard, polished statues of Buddha, cooked fermented tofu, and so on, working from dusk until dawn. Then I would also practice martial arts and carry buckets of water. I did everything that was needed to be done. When midnight came, life settled down. At the temple, once everyone has settled down and fallen asleep, it was then that I could sit and indulge in my spiritual meditation. Even though my family has money and wealth, Therefore, you have all seen my protection. Any thoughts that you have, I have put them to ease. Any questions that you have missed, I have held and brought up. I have protected all of you 
because I have been through these sufferings before. I know that if I allow any one of you to grow up by yourself, then none of you would be able to stand up. I have protected you from everything. Living within the body of a young man, you have to pay a large price for this biological body. The physical body must pay its dues with this life. Individually, we all have desires. We are all egotistic. Before enlightenment, you bring with yourself egos, feeling proud that you are a child of a wealthy family, proud that you belong to an educated family, only caring about your own well-being. More than that, you are proud of your possessing a body of a solemn young man. More than that, you are proud of possessing a body of a solemn young man. This figure is the embodiment of complexity that you bestowed upon yourself. Having gone through many experiences from an early age, Master Ruma often shares his life stories with his students. These stories allow them to extract lessons from those experiences on how to live this human life and how to perfect themselves further. These stories about Master's life when he studied with the great masters of the Himalayan mountains seem surreal and fictional, in result becoming interesting topics of discussion between Master and his students at their gatherings. Furthermore, Master Ruma often tells his ordained disciples stories about the spiritual lives of past masters such as Shakyamuni Buddha, Jesus Christ, Bodhidharma, the Sixth Patriarch, Hui Nang, and the Indian Gurus such as Paramahansa Yogananda, Mahavatar Babaji. By sharing the stories of the past masters, Master Ruma helps his disciples derive many precious lessons for the spiritual path of an ordained disciple in this modern era. Master Ruma clearly understands more than anyone that practicing true Dharma is extremely challenging and rigorous. Therefore, Master Ruma is not only a spiritual teacher, but also a companion, helping his monastic disciples firmly step forward on their path of spirituality, helping them surpass any obstacles and pitfalls. Through his discussions at gatherings, Master Ruma reminds his monastics to stand firm on their ideals and principles as ordained disciples. He reminds them to accept their role and noble mission as being God's chosen ones to descend onto this world. Each ordained disciple is a noble soul chosen by the Almighty to descend onto this world and accompany the living master on his journey of the true Dharma propagation to support in spreading the power of compassion as well as the divine teachings to sentient beings around the world. Most of the time, temples or monasteries teach their monks and nuns the principles through acts such as reciting sutras or reading books. However, Master Ruma, slightly different in his teachings, usually organizes learning events and exams for his ordained disciples. The ordained disciples are divided into many small groups. Men and women are separated when participating in the questions and examinations given by Master Ruma. 
The questions are usually for Master's teachings, addressed in his discussions and lectures from the public published versions of his poems and diaries. These writings include everything from his knowledge of this modern world to current occurrences in daily life. To find answers to these questions, the monastic disciples are required to have a broad view, extensive knowledge, and ability to understand and learn the principles in Master Ruma's lectures and explanations. Master Ruma completely understands his disciples. He understands that youngsters cannot be forced to sit in one place and given a book to read, nor be handed a book of sutras to recite. Master always looks for the most effective method to stimulate his students' curiosity's ability to learn. This way, the ordained disciples will easily recognize and acquire the knowledge delivered in the form of questions and answers during lecture sessions. Master Ruma's monks and nuns of this 21st century represent monastics of the modern era. These monastic disciples know how to preserve and promote Buddha's true Dharma. A true monastic disciple must know to incorporate meditation in their daily life and spiritual practice, to humbly learn the teachings and maintain Buddha's supreme Dharma. They are truly Master Ruma's monastic disciples. Is it true that Master Ruma's ordained disciples only meditate and study with their highly respected master every day? Not necessarily. After the morning meditation sessions, Master Ruma usually spends time leading various exercise activities. Master and his students gather at a spacious area where they exercise and train for good health together. After much time practicing at various monasteries, including Shaolin temples in China and Taiwan, Master Ruma has a good grasp of the Chinese martial art Tai Chi. As a highly respected teacher, he trains his students from his learnings. Tai Chi is a form of martial art that's extremely beneficial to your health. It is great for all ages. Master shows his students willingly. Master's every move is fluid, slow, and graceful. Master always reminds his students you must always know to love yourself. When we train and exercise, we have a healthy physique and a stronger immune system to combat the harshness of illness and other obstacles in life. Therefore, we should always remember to give ourselves a great source of energy through exercise and training. This is also one way of expressing love to yourself. Thank mm -hmm. you.
xa quá như vậy sao ta Not only does he teach Tai Chi to his students, he also teaches different types of exercise suitable for all ages. For the older students, he teaches them yoga to aid in flexibility and body strength. As for the young monks, he teaches them bodybuilding Master spends a lot of time researching and learning the best bodybuilding techniques appropriate for the development and maturity of young bodies. Bodybuilding helps us train in endurance, relieves daily stress, keeps our body healthy and fit, and helps us fight against disease and illness with a stronger physique and mind. Quite often, we can see that Master Ruma and his monks always stay youthful, strong, healthy, and maintain a muscular toned body. Perhaps since Master Ruma has always taught his students proper training and exercise, that is why his Sangha has been able to maintain such good health. Therefore, his Sangha has such an amazing source of energy and strength to continue the journey of supporting Master in spreading compassion and the light and sound dharma to sentient beings everywhere. Thank you. 
Thì chán của mình á, vô cái, cái tay của mình Hai cái tay mình nè à, Thân mình rút cái tay mình ra à, Thẳng lên Đưa lên Đó, ba lần như vậy Hai ngón tay này Nó nằm sát ở lỗ mũi mình Hai ngón tay này Nó nằm ở dưới cả mình Đây Bây giờ mình sẽ kéo nó ra Đó. Nhẹ nhẹ ra after the daily training and exercise activities, the monks and nuns continue with their tasks given by Master. In order to provide for all members of the Sangha and prepare for the meditation retreats, Master Ruma and his disciples solely grow different crops in the garden, such as various vegetables, tuber crops, and fruits for food for the Sangha. Regardless of which meditation center he stays at, Master always prepares a clear spacious piece of land for his monastics to do farming. With prior experience in crop farming, Master Ruma clearly understands the methods of cultivating land for everything from vegetables to tuber crops to different types of fruit trees. Master teaches his students cultivation techniques that will give the best successful results. He teaches how to properly plant so many crops can be grown from trees or plants, their appropriate season, and in the perfect soil compatibility. With the farming process, Master and his disciples only use manual labor, no powered machinery. The monastic disciples farm completely by hand, manually weeding and breaking up soil, sowing the seeds as well as fertilizing and watering the plants. As you already know, the meditation centers are usually located in rural and remote areas, so the soil is not very fertile. Master usually needs to turn the soil healthy and fertile before planting. This soil is particularly very hard and compacted. However, the monks and nuns use only hoes and plows to dig up and loosen the soil. With proper daily stewardship and farming practices under the guidance of Master, every meditation center has an abundant variety of fresh organic food. Any time attending one of the secluded retreats or seven-day meditation retreats, the meditation practitioners always have the opportunity to enjoy eating fresh tuber crops and vegetables planted by Master and his monastics. Not only that, the meditation practitioners also enjoy different tropical fruits. The meditation center in Cambodia, for instance, has a mango garden, a coconut garden, and even a dragon fruit garden. The meditation center in Chiang Mai has a long on and soursop garden. Also, the meditation center in Laos has its own jackfruit and pineapple garden. When eating these fruits, the meditation practitioners savor their sweetness and freshness. These fruits are not only filled with a delicious taste, but are also saturated with a compassion and care from Master Ruma and his ordained disciples. Starting out with no experience in farming, the ordained disciples have become experienced cultivators over time under the instructions and guidance of Master Ruma. This is all thanks to Master's diligent and compassionate supervision. In addition to witnessing the compassionate cultivation, the meditation practitioners are also sometimes fortunate to see Master Ruma's angel pets through videos and even in person. These pets are angels in the forms of dogs, peacocks, fish, pigeons, and various other birds. Master Ruma and his monastic disciples 
take the time to care and raise these lovely pets every day. Because of his extremely generous and loving heart, as well as many years of experience, Master Ruma has a lot of knowledge in caring for these adorable pets. Master Ruma carefully teaches the monks and nuns about everything from personal hygiene, the preparation and selection of food, bathing and playing methods, as well as how to fully understand each of these little saints' personalities. Something to also know is that each and every one of these beloved dogs are usually birthed and personally delivered by Master Ruma and his students. They were all born within Master Ruma's loving arms. Since then, they have grown up with the loving care, compassion, and nourishment of Master and his ordained monks and nuns. It is Master and his monks and nuns who pump the milk, took close care of and played with these beloved saints since they were young until they grew up. The monks and nuns would daily spend time walking them around the meditation center whilst they all together had fun and played on the grass. The monks and nuns have always paid special attention to these little saints through their daily and loving care, regarding them as close friends. Along with these beloved dogs, Master Ruma and his monastics also look after the parrots and doves. At each meditation center, Master bred over a hundred different species of parrots. Each species requires a unique style of care regarding everything from their shelter to their food. Through Master Ruma's instructions is the only way the monks can understand how to best take care of each parrot. In addition to teaching how to feed the parrots daily, Master Ruma also teaches his monastics techniques of designing the parrot's perches. Designing a bird perch is not easy. We must choose a tree that has a beautiful stand, suitable for each parrot's figure and interest. Once they stand on their perch, the parrot should feel comfortable and happy. For the phoenix species, the monks use dried coconuts, separating parts of the skin and hanging them on the trees as the bird's nest. As for the larger parrots, Master and his monastics use iron and nets to design suitable nests for them. When there was free time, Master Ruma and his monks and nuns would often reserve time to play with the parrots and teach them to talk. The parrots are very happy to be alongside with Master and his monks and nuns. Standing on the perch, they are playful and constantly dancing and expressing their interest. When knowing a new parrot is born, Master is usually very happy and eager. He would personally mix the powder food and feed the newly born parrots. Taking care of small parrots is much more difficult than the mature parrots. Master always guides and reminds his monks and nuns to be cautious and meticulous. Day after day, the parrots have grown up and matured within the loving compassion of Master Ruma and his students. Each loving pet needs to be taken care of differently. Their caretaker needs to have a truly loving heart and knowledge. Master Ruma's every action and gesture towards his pets clearly reflects his loving kindness 
and compassion. Master Ruma wants to remind all his students to remember and clearly understand this message from God. Taking care of and loving animals is the duty and responsibility of human beings. After finishing up the workday, the monks and nuns all together would prepare the meals for lunch. Master Ruma's monks and nuns usually only consume a main meal at noon. All monks and nuns personally cook for themselves and the disciples who come to the center. The main source of the meals are vegetables grown in the garden. The monk and nuns often spend time harvesting the garden from which all meals are prepared. Almost all of Master Ruma's monks and nuns, regardless of male or female, are able to cook. Their dishes created are diverse and plentiful with delicious taste. What a blessing for the monks and nuns to learn from a teacher, the excellent chef Master Ruma himself. Master Ruma is highly experienced creating vegetarian recipes. He was fortunate to have the opportunity of traveling the world, experiencing various cultural cuisine from different countries, and combining it with his passion of cooking when he was young. Master has already released many books, including Supreme Cuisine and DVDs, Cooking with Master, guiding his students through the methods of cooking vegetarian recipes, the vegetarian food Master makes is colorful, rich in nutrition, and contains abundant flavors, which everyone enjoys. The students not only learn how to cook the vegetarian food from Master Ruma, but they also learn to decorate them, how to successfully combine ingredients together, as well as be educated about the many health benefits inspiring taste buds of consumers. Master also guides his students on the details of selecting and cooking dishes. Everything from the simplest dish, such as white rice, to more sophisticated dishes. Each dish is always given special attention by Master. The holy divine chefs would always use a special seasoning to help the meals become more delicious this is called the Five Holy Seasonings, an interesting name that Master has often mentioned when talking about the Five Holy Names. Master often teaches his students that when cooking, we must purify our body, speech, and mind 
by reciting the five holy names, making the dish greater. Even a bowl of white rice or a simple cup of soup can help make the food more delicious. Master Ruma not only cooks for the monks and nuns in the center, but he also serves thousands of practitioners attending the retreats. During meditation retreats, many monks and nuns spend a great amount of time on selecting and cleansing the vegetables, making various menus from various recipes. After finishing the lectures, Master and his monks and nuns would often go into the kitchen and make dishes for the practitioners. Regardless of his aching body, resulted by the karma generated from mankind, Master neglects his own meal, personally paying proper attention to everyone else's meal, carefully checking the quality of the meals before serving to everyone. Master and his monks and nuns also plan recipes for the following days so that nobody feels bored with the same dishes. Master is such, always paying special care and attention towards the disciples. Through an action or gesture, Master always entrusts a lesson for his monks and nuns. Before lunchtime, the monks and nuns would line up separately to beg for alms. Afterwards, everyone would concentrate on eating. The teacher and students gathered together for a meal. Before the meals, Master Ruma and his students would often spend several minutes praying towards the Almighty, offering their food and thanking God for blessing them with a delicious meal praying to the Lords to bestow peace and comfort to all beings, to no longer be in misfortune or poverty. This is a practice that Master always reminds his students to do before receiving anything. In addition to cultivating, cooking, and caring for the Bodhisattvas, Master Ruma's monks and nuns also take part in heavy construction work. Perhaps you are unaware the majority of construction work at each meditation center is mainly conducted by Master Ruma and his monks and nuns with no hiring of outside construction laborers or machinery. Perhaps you are unaware, the majority of construction work at each meditation center is mainly conducted by Master Ruma and his monks and nuns with no hiring of outside construction laborers or machinery. As you may have seen, in the past, the Cambodian or Laos center used to be a vast lot of land, which was empty and arid. Both centers have now become beautiful, spacious, and comfortable, filled with plentiful amenities and infrastructure. This is due to the personal efforts and hard work of Master Ruma and his monastics. Starting from an uncultivated land, when Master Ruma and monks and nuns had first set foot upon it, there is much growth. It is similar to wearing new clothes and adding a new source of inspiration. Master and his monks and nuns designed, planned out, and organized the land before beginning any construction. From the meditation hall to the kitchen, the walkways, the community restrooms, to the huts for the practitioners. Everything was built and organized by Master Ruma himself, along with his ordained disciples. After a period of practice and training with Master, the monks and nuns have learned many valuable lessons. They have even utilized these skills to build many beautiful schools for underprivileged students in remote areas. For example, the Pak Het, and Ban Nan Muang in Laos, as well as the Sara Seriche Mankol School in Cambodia. Master was very happy and pleased when witnessing his students' achievements for everything they had done. A worthy result, not wasting Master Ruma's efforts given to his students. 
Master devotedly teaches his monks and nuns to work day and night together to help them realize the value of life, thoroughly grasping the necessary life skills and becoming talented people with strength and wisdom. During each working hour, each drop of sweat and exhaustion from staying up late will help the monks and nuns highly appreciate the moments of practicing spirituality with Master Ruma, the one who has taught them wholeheartedly within the ocean of love. This has encouraged the monks and nuns to strive harder and harder to fulfill the respected Savior's devotion and sacrifice given to them over the years. Every year, Master Ruma often holds meditation retreats at meditation centers in Cambodia, Chiang Mai, and Udon Thani, Thailand, Laos, and Florida. Each retreat is attended by thousands of practitioners throughout the world. Master Ruma and his students all gather at one meditation center one month before the retreat to prepare everything, including the center's infrastructure, living accommodations, daily activities, and the vision to help all practitioners meditate and fully experience a meditation retreat filled with bliss and peace. During the days of preparation for the retreat, Master personally cares for every single task, small task to big. He is truly a spiritual father, a teacher who graciously cares for and guides his students. It seems nothing could tire or overpower Master. Master uses his joyful and enthusiastic working attitude to overcome these pressures and difficulties. This has helped his students better understand the deeds through the simple thinking of a great enlightened master. Perhaps you are unaware, the publications approved by Master Ruba to be released publicly from books on revelations, Master's storytelling, his diary, and the collections of poems to Master's DVDs and CDs of recorded lectures were all compiled, designed, and edited by his monks and nuns. Practicing spirituality with Master Ruma, the monks and nuns not only learn about the spiritual life, but they also have to acquire the knowledge of modern technology of this 21st century. Master had even arranged for his monks and nuns to register for computer and filming courses. The monks and nuns are usually non-specialized individuals who do not know much about computers or other technology. However, through Master Ruma's examination and wholehearted training, the monks and nuns have quickly learned the skills and released many beautifully designed publications and professionally edited films. As we can see, Master Ruma's monastic disciples are truly talented monks and nuns. They not only practice meditation, but are also aware of the knowledge and technicalities of the modern world. Thankfully, human beings of this 21st century 
have had many opportunities to receive Master Ruma's blessings and be closer to his teachings and images. Does the daily life of Master Ruma's monks and nuns only involve meditation, work, farming, construction, and cooking? Can a life like that become too boring? Master always understands the feelings of his monks and nuns. Master is not only a spiritual teacher or a father, but also a friend who can always understand his students' thoughts. Perhaps in the past, Master Ruma used to be a monk, practicing spirituality when he was a young man. Therefore, he can empathize and understand the difficulties his students have to overcome. Especially the young monks and nuns, they will easily become bored of repeatedly working every day. Hence why, in addition to the hours of work and practice, Master Ruma often organizes sport and intellectual games for his monks and nuns to participate in. It is undeniable that Master Ruma is not only a spiritual teacher, but an inventive mentor as well. Master has created a useful recreational area for the young monks and nuns. He clearly understands that the young monks and nuns have difficulty comprehending and appreciating the noble treasures of spirituality. Master has organized some games in the past which he had successfully overcome during the moments of practice with his respected gurus in the Himalayas. Although these games are less challenging than the past spiritual experiences that Master had participated in, they still require the monks and nuns to apply and combine a practitioner's wisdom, youthful spirit, and dynamic enthusiasm. The monks and nuns are very united and wholeheartedly determined to participate in such sporty games held by Master, including volleyball, basketball, swimming contests, bag jumping, rope climbing, tug of war, or even games which require their intellect and skillful capabilities, such as sewing and cooking. Master expects these games to help narrow the gap between a true living master and his students, becoming closer with everyone and kindly guiding them during the entire competition. Each game contains a lesson of spirituality and life experiences. Furthermore, it is also an opportunity for everyone to create a sense of importance in sports and train for their physical health and well-being. As a reminder for everyone that being a human is hard, if we know how to love one another and take care of ourselves, then we are able to protect our physical body and maintain the fundamentals of our souls to become more spiritually developed. Although it is a simple lesson, many of us are neglecting our own physical health. Through Master Ruma's diaries and collection of stories, we all know that Master became a monk at the age of 23 in India. In the temples of India and Tibet, rules and regulations for monastic disciples are very strict Buddhist monks regard the rules as a fence, aiding them to stay away from the outside world, increasing their determination to practice and to easily achieve enlightenment. Master often shared that being a monastic disciple is not simple. They must obey the rules, such as begging for alms, preserving the precepts, and consistently meditating. Of course, as for Master Ruma's monastic disciples, he does not apply 100% of these detailed and strict rules like when he practiced in India. Master only partially applies these rules according to the human life of the 21st century. Master clearly understands more than anyone that during this time period, young students cannot follow such rules. Instead of forcing them to comply with these rules, Master Ruma uses compassion to convert them, attentively teaching and training his students to become monks and nuns filled with compassion, wisdom, and diligent practice. The world's population has reached more than 8 
billion people. Yet only a few are aware of the spiritual path seeking Dharma. What a blessing for the country of Vietnam, where numerous hearts have sought the Dharma path and are directed towards the holy divine sound and light guided by Master Ruma. Monkhood is a noble path, a path fully paying gratitude to one's parents. Those who have an ideal of renouncing the world are people of direction and perseverance, knowing how to find oneself through liberation and sincerely living life. Monastic disciples are the next successors in assuming the responsibility of propagating Buddha's Dharma and maintaining the original Dharma inherited from Buddha for over 2,500 years. Monastic disciples are messengers, beneficial tools accompanying Master on the path of propagating the true Dharma for all sentient beings. It should be thought that if the world is without the presence of a Master and his monastic disciples, would Buddha's true Dharma still exist? Hopefully, the previous images will partially help you further understand the life of Master Ruma's monastic disciples within the 21st century. The life of monastic disciples is not restrained within the framework of the precepts. However, it flourishes under the compassion and thoughtful teachings from a true living master. Monastic disciples must truly progress within their spirituality as they discover happiness along the path of practice. Those who do so are genuine disciples. They represent the true Dharma of the Golden Age. They are none other than Master Ruma's monastic disciples. Please pray for the world to have the light of truth from the Almighty God bestowed upon us. Hopefully, there will be more sentient beings who know the path of monkhood, who wish to seek the Dharma and accompany the living Master to spread Buddha's Dharma. Let us join Master Ruma and his Sangha in rebuilding the age of the true Dharma for mankind in the 21st century.